Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. We are super excited to have the entire cast of Skin, which is the third theatrical, theatrical production uh, put on by Deaf Spotlight. Um, Skin is, uh, will be showing at the uh, 12th Avenue Theater main stage the first two weeks of May. And it was written by Crystal Roberts and directed by Alexander Wales. Um, it's performed in American Sign Language, as you'll see, with English uh, subtitles, or captions. And the story follows four deaf queer women who are struggling to make sense of violence, sex, and love and friendship amidst a changing landscape in Seattle's Capitol Hill. Um, deaf Spotlight is an organization based right here in Seattle. And they have the mission of inspiring, encouraging, and showcasing creative works of, of, of and by and for uh, deaf people in the Pacific Northwest. Um, they put on all kinds of really cool um, productions and offerings. They put on the Seattle Deaf uh, Film Festival, epic jams, theatrical productions, uh, group art exhibits, and they also have a deaf drama group for youth. Um, so now the cast will perform an excerpt from the play, and then afterward we'll have a Q&A panel session. Um, so I'll let them take it away.
<laughs> okay, thank you guys. That was awesome. We'll go ahead and open it for uh, Q&A. Um, but first, why don't each of you introduce yourself? Tell us your role in the play and a little bit about um, how the play was designed. Sure. Um, so hi, my name's Patty Lang. I'm the executive director for Deaf Spotlight. Um, we'll talk more about that later. I think let's just do introductions, yeah. So hi, my name is Alexandria Wales. I'm the director for the show. And I want to thank um, Alanis? Alanis from the New York office. I want to thank him for, for getting here today. Hi, my name is Michelle Mary Schaefer. I am playing Ash. <laughs> my name is Kaylin Feeney. I am playing Quinn. My name is Rhonda Cochran, and I am playing Rose. And my name is Amelia, and I am playing Sammy. Yeah. This is Alexandria speaking. So we just, um, 
uh, finally got sort of the three different versions of the sit paired, uh, the script paired down to the final version. So we're in the process of rehearsing at this time, and we're opening on May 5th. So we still have some minor adjustments to make until we get to that point. So thank you so much for joining us today and being part of that process. And thank you, Google and Anna, as well, for the opportunity to come here and showcase this um, production that we're putting on. So I wish that Crystal Roberts could be here. Um, unfortunately, she couldn't. She's the writer. Um, but the history of Deaf Spotlight is a little bit, let's just give a little bit of that history. It's, uh, we do cinema as well as visual arts mm -hmm, and, and performing arts. Those are our three sort of areas of expertise. And we believe in supporting artists in each of those avenues. because there are often not enough deaf artists in any of these fields, and we really want to see that change. So we want to support artists in each of those fields that we're working in. And we want to give the opportunity for deaf artists to show their stories and add their voice to the stage in, and create higher visibility for the deaf community in film and theater and art. So we're trying to create opportunities um, that are inspiring, that inspire people to be artists and start to join the art community as well. <clears throat> so giving, we're trying to give people opportunities to work in the field as well as some experience in that field. And how Crystal fits into that picture and this show, we had an open call for script writers, for playwrights, um, any deaf playwrights, and we, chose this, this script, and we are in the second year of the production process with that. We've been working with Oh, we got a second script from a hearing writer, which was translated into American Sign Language. That was our second show. And then we wanted to do something that was local, that was really inspired by its environment. That's where Crystal Roberts came in. She is a writer, um, and she wrote this script two years ago, submitted it to us. We told her we wanted to hear her story of her experience of Seattle and the Pacific Northwest area. So she wrote us a script in that vein. She's a deaf woman who lives, who's, has lived in the area. So she went through a long process of um, developing the script and it was also, we did some test reads, et cetera. And now we're excited to start working with this finished script with our cast here and sort of flesh out the real concept entirely. That's been part of the process. Yeah, often as I'm working with the script, I look at um, some of the language and I have some of it I have on my phone here. <clears throat> Get to load. So her words. She says, I wrote skin from, uh, for personal and political reasons. This is Crystal. Because I have not yet seen a real representation of deaf lesbian women on stage. And this is a story about the women that I have broken bread with, that I cherish. Butch Dykes, queers, none of them often represented on stage. So I was searching for an outlet that encompassed both of my identities as queer and deaf. Because there's a disproportionate rate of suicide and mental health, mental health issues and addiction in our community. And every day we go through these struggles we have to find meaning in our friendships and in the violent political climate in which we live. Theater seems like the perfect outlet 
for this. These characters, which I've written, have deep personal, are deep personal collage. And it is an image of the people whose shoulders the future will stand on. It is important to me that their story is told, that these characters are complex without judgment of good or bad, and show them in this world which is unkind to them, the resilience that they have with, in themselves and with one, for one another. And it is also a farewell letter to my beloved community, which I have seen change significantly in the last decade. The process itself has been a great journey from the request to the initial script to finally understanding the depth of the story until it has re reached the stage. So those are Crystal's comments that she sent to me. Everyone's saying, wow, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I think I, it was beautiful, I thought. So <clears throat> in addition to what Patty said, I think for deaf women, in work in many different capacities in the theater, writing, directing, et cetera. And I'm really appreciative of Patty's support. I came here from New York, I'm visiting, um, and we all came together to create this piece together from all over. Um, and we have to always find this inner strength to keep going on and, we, and continue our work all over the country as deaf women in this art. And of the four women that we have who are cast, three of them are from out of state. Um, Michelle's from Austin. Um, we have uh, Kaylin is from Portland, Oregon. And then Rhonda is the one <laughs> who's from Seattle. <laughs> and Amelia is from LA. Do you want to talk a little bit about your role in the show, each of you, Michelle, or how you got into the field as well? I've been acting now for a long time, but kind of professionally for a couple of years. I got my degree in deaf education at RIT, and then I had my master's there, and then I became, an, I was Billy in tribes, that was my first, that was the, I was the first deaf female actress to take on that role. And I faced a lot of challenges. Uh, I play, played Billy three times in um, 2016, and I traveled with that show a little bit. And that has what has led me to here. So that's been my process becoming an actor. Uh, I'm a script writer. I've been living in LA for about 10 years. And I recently moved back to Portland. I've been writing my own short films. And I'm interested in be getting into television writing as well. So I have sort of two avenues that I'm pursuing. Um, and I really, there's just not enough deaf um, characters in television, period. So that's one of my motivations for that. And I. It's trying to develop my skills in a few different areas. And this is Rhonda. I'm just an actor. I'm an actor here. They're all the, I've been an actor for a bit. I um, haven't done a lot. I enjoy going to the theater. Um, going to the theater. I've worked at the Deaf Interpreter as well. So my experience in the theater has really been social. social justice, excuse me. My my area of expertise is social justice, political, national deaf advocacy work. I was a trainer. And so that's been my field, my area of expertise. 
But I have learned so much by being involved with skin, being involved in this experience. It's been a wonderful ex experience, a wonderful process. That's a little bit about who I am. Hi there. I feel like I started acting in the womb, probably in my mother's belly. I'm from a deaf family, so we were very visual, very, you know, it's been incorporated into my life from the get-go. I went to Gallaudet University in DC, graduated from there, the degree in education. And then I became involved with deaf spring awakening. Spring awakening. And I had a lot of opportunities that I think often deaf people don't get in the arena of acting. I've been involved in some shows on Broadway. To be a deaf actor, you want to get work, you have to travel. You have to travel across the country, and that's great. You get to go all over the country and meet beautiful women like these here today and have this kind of experience. It feels good to be at, among deaf people in a deaf cast. I feel like I've come home by being part of this experience. Patty, should I say something about myself? Okay, well, I went to the University of Washington. Yay, Anna, we're both alumni from there. And I studied ceramics. I grew up mainstream. I went to public school, but I have deaf siblings, a brother and sister. And we all worked with interpreters going to the public school. And then I went to college, and I was seeking my own identity as a deaf person in the deaf community here in Seattle. And I was also picking up who I am as an artist along the way. So I went to college. I went to a residency program, met other artists. And then as a deaf artist, I wasn't meeting other deaf artists. I went to graduate school and set up this organization, Deaf Spotlight. And I was thinking about the future of deaf artists, what I had before, where it was at, and where I'd like it to go, what I'd like for deaf artists to have in the future. So working with this kind of group, this kind of a cast, this production, I really believe that all of us have our own community, our own space. And we need to support our internal space, our creativity, what inspires us, and spread that and share it with the community that we live in. Deaf, queer community, they tend to be different groups, different groups of people. I don't know if you want to add to that. I'm going to talk about the LBGTQ community here, about how to bring people together. And Patty's saying, right, out in the world, we have this intersectionality what it means to be deaf, plus what it means to be a lesbian, what it means to be queer, where's the story out there? So I'm excited to work with this group, this cast, to provide this opportunity and this viewpoint to a broader community. And Alexandria, right, we work with a creative team for this performance, and it's only in ASL. And the reason we've done that is because we really want people to have that experience rather than listening to a voiceover of the actors in their performance. We want people to really get into the space, really become part of what we're sharing. It's with intention that we do this. We've created this sign space. I grew up as a dancer, and I went to University of the Arts, of the Arts in Kentucky, Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania. And it was a broad area of study. I did some performance work in that area, choreography, directing for the stage, for small groups, for web-based small films, and made that transition kind of back and forth. It became an opportunity that was there. And I'm not one to sit by and just wait for things to be handed to me and then take it on. I wanted to make things happen. So I found that the reality is that there are many of us out there, but we need to find an outlet, a way for us to interact with the broader world to create this kind of a space. And to do that, we have to meet it halfway. So this kind of a story 
creates that space. Crystal's writing, all of us here. It's nice, it's inspiring. It, it's a breath of fresh air for people. You know, we've been on this journey, and so it's nice to finally meet it here. Patty asking Anna, are there other questions? I have no questions, but do other people have, have questions? There's a mic, you can walk up and people. Okay, so my question is, when you do a, per actually, it's sort of a two-part question. One is for, one is about death spotlight and one is about skin in particular. But they're really both the same question, and that's, when you do something that's so focused, right? So we're talking about like an intersection of two communities to where we now have like a really small community. How do you, how do you bring, because obviously like your, your audience isn't gonna be all people of that community. You're hoping to like share that experience with people outside the community. So how do you, how do you make it accessible to those people without diluting the, I don't know, without diluting the experience? How do you, how do you make it so that people who aren't deaf and aren't um, and aren't queer and aren't you know any of those things? How do you how do you do that without um, I guess without losing what makes that special? I don't know if I'm making any sense. <laughs> Alexandria, do you appreciate the theater? Do you appreciate yes, going to theater? Absolutely. Do you enjoy going to the theater? Then I do. come, <laughs> then come, right? It's open oh, to everybody. I, to. I mean, I think that's the point. Please do come. It's not a closed group. We want people to feel like, you know, we don't want them to think it's specific stories, specific community, specific group of people that we're trying to cater to. It's really for people to come to, theater goers. Right, it's a small community with human issues, but it's applicable to anybody. We all, it's applicable to any group. We all have that commonality. We all have that space where we have common ground. And theater is a, such a great venue to explore that. It's welcoming, it's inviting. We want people to come. We want people to learn about other stories, other groups of people. So the theater is a great space for that. Please put out the, put out the word, advertise. We want people to come. It's a great experience. Amelia and I, we worked on Spring Awakenings together on Broadway. And a lot of people who came, they were like, oh, it's a musical with deaf actors. Why should I go to that? And then they came, and they were like, oh, it's not just about deaf actors. It's about communication. It's about a story. It's a human story. It's about the connection. It happens you know, that it's with teenagers, finding themselves, coming of age, something we all have been through, right? We've all been teenagers, so that's the bigger, that's the bigger catch for everybody. We can all connect with that. It's a lens that we're looking through, and it's powerful. So please, do, come. Hi. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the challenges and opportunities of writing and performing in ASL. That's a good question. <laughs> Patty's deferring. So talking about some of the challenges in a signed oh. performance. <laughs> so Rhonda, sure. One thing that I've noticed that is particularly challenging, the script itself was written in English, right, of course. And then sometimes it doesn't translate well to ASL. It's not a direct translation. So we're like a little stuck. Like, how do we do this? What do we, how do we sign that? Where do we go with that? How do I express that concept? that can be clearly accessible to people in a way that's meaningful that we get it from the script. It's a big challenge. And luckily we have a lot of support for each other. We've had a lot of discussions back and forth. And Crystal would show up in the evening and we would just hammer her with questions. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I feel like that process, it's been a big challenge, but you know, translating from English to ASL and how to express it and not lose the meaning behind it. Another challenge has been with the written script, the words, you could hear the words, you know, oftentimes they have a double meaning. You have a pause or something that really, a pun, a pun, so it could have a double meaning. And when we sign it, 
ASL has different language, different puns, different, so different from English. It's not, the grammatic structure is very different. So when you see that double meaning in English or the layers of meaning, we're thinking about how to come up with something equivalent in ASL that will be meaningful, that will hit the mark and honor that language that we're seeing in written form. Another, let me just give an example. One of the phrases from the script that we spent a lot of time on discussing, but we worked on it. We're not. Razor burn, razor burn, the concept of razor burn. So the context is there. When you watch the play, where we're using it on the body, how it shows up in ASL, really is reflective of what it means in the script. So is it on the face, is it on the arms, is it somewhere else? So we really had to play with that in ASL and figure out a way to give the information, but not give too much, right? Because it's a little bit of an entendre, razor burn. You know, if I just said that, it doesn't really have the meaning. However, but if we identify where, wow, it does have a lot of meaning. So those kind of things would come up in the script and how to make that maintained and meaningful in ASL with four deaf women who come from various backgrounds, from different educational backgrounds, how they express themselves, it varies. They're not, you know, they didn't go to the same school, they didn't grow up in the same communities, their ASL may be different depending on where they grew up. And so being respectful of that and seeing that in the development of this script and honoring it. Deaf bodies, deaf women, these women, it's been very interesting, this journey has been interesting. And Rhonda's saying, do you mind if I add something too? I noticed as well with the character development of Rose and thinking about myself, my background, who I am as a lesbian. Yes, I'm a black woman as well. What does that mean? You know, did I grow up oral? Did I grow up learning sign? The deaf community, it can vary. You know, if you go to mainstream school, public school, residential school for the deaf, those all have huge impacts on language development and how we communicate with the world. Maybe I learned pigeon sign language or ASL or an English order sign language. It all varies and that all affects our thinking and how we approach this script. There are other questions? This is Patty too. I'd like to add as well. Okay, fine. So the writer, Crystal Roberts, she has a specific vision of the four characters. And she gave us some hints, some stories, background of these women, but it was their responsibility to really flesh out the characters, to go on the journey, to experience it, to internalize some behaviors that they think that their character would exemplify. Crystal didn't give that information. She was very inspired by what she saw in the community, here in Seattle. And as we move forward, it, it really created a mosaic. A mosaic has been created by these four actors, these four women. One other thing I'd like to add, Crystal, she really wanted to work with a women-only team, women-only director, women, women actors, all the volunteers, everybody on the set, everybody involved with the production would be women to make it a very safe space for everybody. And right, this has been a truly unique experience because of that. That energy, it's very different. We're used to, you know, something different, so it's very different, really. So Deaf Spotlight, this is the first time we've done a women-only team, a women-only production. First time, three years, it's exciting. And I think that there will be more. And yes, so however you identify, come. It's not only for women. <laughs> that's not the point. I don't think that's the point Patty's making. And Patty's saying, right, if you go to the film or theater, you go to a film festival, they have different 
groups that have different film festivals, but you're interested in learning more about that group. So you might go in for a couple hours and kind of delve into their life by viewing this film and feel what they're feeling. Really, any expression through the arts is valid and valuable, and creating a safe space for discussion and that process in a healthy, positive way. And someone asked about the challenges about producing this piece. Um, <clears throat> I think it always depends on the script itself. Um, how many characters do you need? What kind of director are you looking for? What's the energy of the piece? Um, what kind of actors are you trying to cast? Who will express these characters best on stage? And getting the people, the right people, to be involved with the production, that's always a challenge. It's a team effort. It's a huge collaboration. So getting everyone's different perspectives and bringing that all together is, yeah, Alexandria's adding. As a director, I do believe that the collaborative process and having that collaborative space when we are creating each character is really inspired by the collection of individuals, right? It's, it's never just one person. I know I go through each of these characters four times, right, with each character. Um, and then all of those experiences sort of, that's the challenge of mm, getting both the language of the play or the language of theater. Um, often it's a process, right? and we're often working with both deaf and hearing people. And sign language is not, it's very, it's not always natural in those um, mixed environments. You have to bring interpreters in. Um, you have, there's a little bit of a language delay just enough for it to be noticeable. I know that I sign quickly, right? So I'm working with interpreters. Sometimes I have to make adjustments for them, and then the interpreter's catching up to me and that sort of thing. Um, you have to have time to listen and respond. And that adds time to the process. I sometimes have to uh, keep in mind and open myself up to that, that being flexible with that um, accommodation. Because we're working with these two languages, and, we're, and you're also working with one another, and each of those people in that process needs to be honored as well. And as a deaf actor, in a production with a script that's already uh, been pro produced in English, and you're working on translating that process, you want to honor the meaning and the intent of the piece, um, and that takes a lot of time. That's a lot of discussion around that, and we want to give the cast about a week beforehand, before we start actually rehearsing, to just get into the script, uh, start understanding what it means in American Sign Language for them. Um, <clears throat> we sat down and had a discussion about how we would sign some of these concepts with each of the actors, um, what each line meant, those puns like Kaylin mentioned, um, translating a lot of the work, really. And then when we started rehearsals, we already had a good sense in our bodies of the direction that we were going with the piece. So trying to, it's different from a hearing actor who might just read from a script, who might go through a table, table read just reading the lines. But we are reading these lines. We need to understand the intent of the piece and then translate from the English into a meaningful expression of that work in our own language. So it takes a lot of time and energy. And um, it take, we're really trying to honor that entire process. Yeah. And if you happen to know any other scripts out there <laughs> that are, especially if they're deaf um, authors, let me know. <laughs> Any other questions? This is your opportunity, so. Uh, so you just mentioned other scripts. Uh, what kind of other projects do you have coming up, if anything? Mm, yeah. Well, Deaf Spotlight, <clears throat> after skin closes, we'll be shifting our focus to our drama camp. We have a youth drama camp in the summers. That's a two-week free day camp for deaf and hard of hearing and children of deaf adults ages 10 to 13, eight. eight to 13. And so we're hiring deaf artists, professionals, to come and work with those youth, teaching them drama and other forms of art. 
and that project is going to culminate. And then we also have a film festival coming up in the spring. So if you're interested in other events that are public, that one's coming up. Um, it's going to be an international film festival that's hosted here in Seattle. We have films from Japan, Australia, uh, <clears throat> New Zealand, all over. Um, all of them in different signed languages. Each country has um, their own, and they are all subtitled. So just like watching a foreign film, and in fact, there are foreign films. <laughs> um, so that's exciting as well, and that's coming up. Mm -hmm. Did you have any other projects that you're working on? Anyone else on the cast or crew? Um, Amelia saying, yeah, I have a project that's coming up. I will have a film in the festival. <laughs> yeah, that's so exciting. <laughs> um, Michelle is saying, my next project is looking for another acting opportunity. I'm trying to focus on my web series. I found some work there, so I'm working on one that's being developed. And then I'm setting up a deaf um, um, Austin. Austin, a theater in Austin, DAT. And that's with Russell Harvard. So, and Bellamy, and I think I'm spelling his last name right. <laughs> Bellamy Akil, Akil, I'm not sure if I spelled that right, but the three of us are establishing a theater in Austin called the Def, um, Austin Theater, and we're just in the beginning stages of that. Hopefully, we'll be doing more shows there in Austin. So, I'm looking forward to that. Maybe I can bring some of these folks over there. <laughs> Maybe Def Spotlight's interested in getting involved. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk to Crystal as well, but. Um, I'd like to see skin produced there potentially, yeah. Uh, and I have a few projects coming up. I just did a TV show. TV pilot. A TV pilot. <clears throat> which is a, and then for, and also a feature film that I'm writing. There's a few women involved in that. And there's a new play that's being written that I'm uh, working on with some other people. And then Patty mentioned before about providing opportunities for deaf artists in the future. And personally, I would like to start developing workshops um, to teach storytelling and writing for deaf artists and signing people. Because that's going through the process of becoming a writer and looking for opportunities as a deaf writer, there's really very few. And I think I was very fortunate. And I want to bring that, my, my experience, to a larger group of deaf artists as well. So I'd like to start working on that project. Mm -hmm. Ron is saying, my next step is I'm a deaf interpreter. I, for Dream Girls. <clears throat> for Dream Girls. For the Village Theater. For the Village Theater. So that's my <laughs> next project. Once I'm done here, I'll be studying. Uh, for that project. So that's what's next for me. <coughs> I just didn't, I think I just talked about that. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, just the film that's coming in the, coming in, that's all. And then yeah, sleep and food. Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that too, Ron does, reiterates. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to add? Well, I will land in New York and hit the ground running <laughs> when I'm done with this project, so. I have a few ASL consulting, ASL consulting jobs uh, for a stage and one web series that's coming up. And then I have another project in the works, which I'm not allowed to fully disclose at the moment <laughs> until I have that contract signed. So, yeah. But we will be, Alexandra and I will be working again together during the camp this summer. So I'm looking forward to that. Great, yeah. Um, and if you're wondering how you can support the deaf community in the future and deaf spotlight, you can come to our events, you can donate to projects, um, share this information with your friends. Um, if you know they've never don't know anything about the deaf community, this is a great opportunity to get a taste. Um, and we want to be connecting with other communities as well. And if, if you have people who are wanting to do that, you know, refer them to us. Um, they get to see a new perspective. Yeah, and I think for outsiders, a lot of people don't understand what the deaf community offers. And we have this concept of deaf gain, and we know that we, the deaf community has a lot of, to offer 
um, the world. And these successes are, are a result of our experiences and our own lens, it, our own lens and experience of the world. And we want to share that. Um, so it can expand your own way of thinking about the world by coming to experience um, what it means to live in a visual world. Because we're visual beings and we sort of, people often maybe rely on what they hear, but we have a different way of picking up um, on what's going on around us and seeing the world. So that's one way that you can. Yeah, and I just wanted to add to that, like you were saying before, you know, the deaf experience is a human experience. We all go through the same things in our lives. We experience heartbreak. We experience um, many different challenges in our lives, violence, maybe sexual violence. We have so many diverse experiences. And experiencing this piece or other pieces by deaf um, artists gives us an opportunity to relate to one another on that human level. Yeah. And you'll see these four amazing actors in their prime as well, so. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're following us on social media, um, we have a hashtag deaf skills, deaf talent, sorry. So deaf talent is the hashtag. If you follow us there, you can keep track of what's going on with Deaf Spotlight and Deaf Talent um, and see what's coming up or support any of the projects that are going on. Yeah. We have some posters here if you want to take some with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? No, I think we should just thank our speakers and thank you guys for coming and for giving us such a wonderful performance. Yeah, this was really thank great. Thank you so much as well. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank <laughs> you.